Hi everyone, welcome back to the farm. Over the last couple of days, we've finished off the muck spreading. The John Deere 8RX has come along and done the drilling as well on the other fields, and we're just getting some land sprayed with Frontier, um, some pre-emergent sprays for some crops which are coming up. And with the John Deere 8RX is doing a lot of the work this year over the farm, um, it had Dad and I talking the other day about the way farming's going. And Dad was saying to me that the heyday of farming was really back in the 60s and 70s. And I didn't really believe him at first, but there was a film which I, I got sent and um, I'll put it on the video now, it will be today's video and you'll let me know in the comments section down below what you think of farming back in the day, were you born in the 60s or 70s um, because it has changed an awful lot and it was really insightful um, seeing just how advanced they were in farming back in the 60s, back when the 135 was around and the Grey Ferguson tractors and for the younger generation I hope you enjoy seeing what farming used to be like back in the good old days, back with the Royal Show, back with Hereford cattle and they had helicopters flying over the crops. I never knew that, spraying herbicides. And farmers had radio stations on their farm for communications and they had phones in cars. Um, quite, they were quite advanced. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy the film. <laughs> Here come the prize winners at the show any farmer will tell you is the greatest on earth, the Royal. And not that this hungry aristocrat is impressed. The Royal, more than anything, reflects the changing face of British agriculture. Every new idea, every invention, every technique that's bang up to the minute, they're all here. This is the latest thing in potato harvesters. How are you going to keep them down on the farm when there's so much to see. These proud Herefords, for instance, which can be worth up to 12,000 guineas apiece. Or these shaggy Highlanders. And, of course, these lords and ladies of the piggeries. Hi there. Uh, haven't I seen you somewhere before? This is the age of power farming, of push-button agriculture when machines take over the big jobs, like this binder harvesting oats. Or this Wellsian giant that has transformed the harvest from a long, hard slog to a smooth combined operation, the combine harvester, which cuts and threshes the crop as it goes. Or this handy weapon that makes baling straw so easy. But above all, it's the combine that has revolutionized harvesting. The mighty combine that delivers the grain and helps the farmers to produce half the food for more than 50 million people. With farming, a branch of engineering science these days, farmers must be up with the times. Bill Banks' farms near Spalding cover 2,000 acres of rich Lincolnshire land. To keep in touch, Bill has his own radio station linking the farm office with his own car and the farm foreman. Sometimes, Bill deals with farm problems when he's 20 miles away at the market. Hold on there, Mr. Bank. Yes, Holland? Uh, we're a little concerned about the potato markets this morning. Uh, prices are not so good. Oh, I have heard the trade isn't very good this morning. What is the price? Oh, about £14.10. Well, if you can get £14.10 a ton, that will satisfy me. What sort of yield has he got? Around eight tons. Well, eight tons an acre at fourteen pounds ten a ton will be enough, I think. And uh, I'll tell him I'll see him a bit later. I'm on my way down now. Hi there. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Mr. Bang says carry on with the potatoes, and he'll see you when he comes down. Right, I'll be down in the field. Bill Banks is always ready to try out new or unorthodox machinery. Britain's farms today are roaring with the noise of tractors, straw choppers and potato elevators, crawlers and balers, dumpers and ditches. Here, Bill Banks' men are laying pipes with a trench cutter. It may look like something from outer space, but dig that ditch. 
In the Fen country, the thing is worth its weight in gold. It cuts ditches six feet deep. And there's plenty for the automatic reed cutter to do. Long-haired operators beware. And it's also advisable to keep your distance when the manure spread is about. In a summer which has broken all records, the combines have never been busy. They've brought in a golden harvest, and even the farmers are all smiles. Some went on holiday just when, in any ordinary year, they'd be taking in the crop. Farmer Banks, looking around, has a word with one of the harvesters. Once they said that combines like these couldn't operate in Britain. The fields were too small, the land generally too hilly, the climate too wet. So said the pessimists. Today, 40,000 combines like these bring home the grain and it's hard to remember what a team of Clydesdale horses really looks like. Nature, machines, man's ingenuity go hand in hand, and the end product is a store of grain stacked high in the nation's silos. Farming progress would never be possible without the backroom men and women, the botanists, the soil experts, the chemists and engineers. At Silso in Bedfordshire, 120 scientists and technicians of the National Institute of Agricultural Engineering face up to the industry's mechanisation problems. And here's one of the results of seven years' experiments. A tractor a baby could drive. Well, almost. No gearbox. It's easy. Pull the lever back and you're in reverse. Push it forward, and away you go. As this scientist secretary knows, it's simpler than typing. The accent in farming is always on tomorrow. Down on Basil Thwaites' farm near Leamington Spa, the cows never had it so good. Strip lighting, overhead heating, timing and weighing appliances. They're all in this cow shed. Uh, so sorry, a uh, milking pump. It's all steel and concrete, sliding doors, non-slip floors, mechanical milkers. And the cows go up in life in more senses than one, on steel shelves. One cowman can get 60 gallons of milk from cows to churns in an hour. Will that be all? The milk goes straight through the vacuum pipe over the cooling surface of the churns. It's swift, hygienic and efficient. And so is the work of the helicopter service. In the war against plant pests and diseases, the whirly bird is one of the finest weapons, spraying or dusting crops with insecticides, or even, if need be, laying a top dressing of fertilizer. Agricultural aviation is here to stay. Here at Ted Owen's up-to-date farm near Bristol, the fertilizer is spread and watered in with these spray lines. This irrigation setup lays on rain when and where the farmer wants it, and in just the right amount. If only we had one of these during a heat wave. This forage harvester cuts the grass which will be preserved for winter feeding, a process that is replacing the old practice of haymaking. grass mustn't be too wet. For his cattle, Farmer Owens uses an idea popular with dairy farmers today, strip grazing. The cows are confined to an area that gives them just the right amount of food. The fence is progressively moved a few yards. It is also electrified to give a mild shock to any greedy beast that is tempted to go nibbling out of bounds. Animal feeding lends itself to a constant flow of new ideas. And at Buckland Farm in Berkshire, they don't let the cows out to graze. They say
serve the food to them in a manger and have more control over the cow's menu. Chopped grass is fed into the manger twice a day. And the cows? They are said to prefer this to serve yourself. While on the subject of a good square meal, Norman Archer tries out the latest feeding ideas with his land race pigs. Somebody mentioned food? It costs between 12 and 15 pounds to fatten a pig to the bacon stage. Farmer Archer recently turned down 500 guineas for one of his land race boars. And talking of food, even farmers sometimes get hungry. Will you please ring up with them on the hill and speak to my wife, tell her I shall be a little bit late home for dinner tonight. We've had all these breakages and I'll be home in about half an hour, I'd say, from now. Right? Thank you. Click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video. Mm hmm.